In a previous overview video, I described many of the common git commands and how they can be used, along with the distributed version control system. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to implement those using Visual Studio 2019 and its GitHub plugin. First, let's take a look at Visual Studio 2019 as it exists out of the box. When we go to Team Explorer, this is where we can do any interactions with the version control system. You see right now it's connected with Azure DevOps. And I'll also point out it's not always very obvious, but this top box you can click on and you can see several different things like branches, kind of like a feature branch, pull requests, and then we can also take a look at any changes and we can do a synchronization. Now if we take a look at push, Notice that push has two options here. One of them is where we're going to push it. Remember, we can have multiple remotes. Typically, the default remote is called origin. I made another one here also called GitHub. So just as we saw in our animation, we can synchronize with one version control system, which here is called origin. We can pull in changes from that version control system, and we can also push changes to a different remote, and we'll typically give it a nickname. This one's called My Projects. Back to Visual Studio, I'm going to search for GitHub up in the top, and we see Install GitHub Extension for Visual Studio. This will bring up an installer. I go ahead and select what I want, 44 meg, that's fine, and I choose Install. Now with GitHub installed, take a look. We have a new GitHub section here, and it's also given us a link for training and documentation, of course, which is worth checking out. At the moment, we're looking at an existing project that I've already pushed to GitHub, so that's why there's a link here. But the next thing I want to do is show how to create a new project and push that to GitHub. So let's choose File, New, Project. Then we'll say ASP.NET Core Web Application and choose Next. I'll call this Plant Diary. So you notice the project and the solution name are Plant Diary. And choose Create. Now it's created our basic application with a few fundamental pages like the privacy page and then the index page, which is our start page, error page, and just a few other things. And it gives us a few hints here on what to do next. Let's navigate to Team Explorer, and we don't see a whole lot going on here yet. So I'm going to click on the plug and note that it says, okay, my login has failed. So I'm going to sign out and sign back in again. This time I can choose connect. If I already have a GitHub account, if not, I can choose sign up. And I'll sign in with my browser, probably the easiest. I'm already logged in in my browser, so all I really need to do here is authorize, because it says, okay, yeah, I already know who you are. So I choose authorize, and then put in my super secret, super secure password. And then it simply logs me in, shows me my GitHub repo, and then back here in Visual Studio, it says, oh, okay, I know who you are now. If we ever need to change credentials, we simply go to Manage Connections and then Connect to GitHub. And that takes us back to the prompt where we just were. But at this point, we want to connect our project to GitHub. So I'm going to say File and then Add to Source Control. A couple of subtle things happen when I do that. First of all, let's go back to Team Explorer. And we see something that's very important here, which is we now have Plant Diary in our local Git repositories. Secondly, if we take a look at the lower right, we see master branch. And as a matter of fact, this is the place where we can create branches locally if we wish. And more importantly, we can look to confirm that we're doing work on the correct branch. Let's click the home icon again and this time choose sync. Let's choose publish to GitHub. It gives us a few options here, GitHub and then my account. And I have a couple other accounts here so I can choose the correct one and then the name of the project. And then as soon as I'm ready, I'll choose Publish. I'm not going to worry about making this one private. That way uh, you can see it as well. So I choose Publish. I'll show you a little before and after. I had a few projects already out here called Plant Diary 001 and 002. This one we're just calling Plant Diary. So in a moment, I'll refresh this search and we'll see if we have a new Plant Diary repository. And take a look. We have a Plant Diary repository just created four minutes ago. And we see two commits, so uh, add git ignore and git attributes and add project files. Git ignore, this is something that it did for us, and that's very important. Git ignore helps us to filter things out of the GitHub repository that do not need to be there. There are certain things that we do not want to push into a GitHub repository. Number one, compiled code. Because you can always recompile code, number one. 
Number two, the version control system can't really tell what's changed in compiled code because it's binary, where it can tell what changed in a text file. So if you make a small change to a binary file or a compiled file and you upload it, Git, GitHub thinks the entire thing changed, and then it wants to put you into a multiple head or a rebase scenario, which is a little tricky to get out of. So we don't want to sh push any compiled files. We also don't want to push any files that are specific to our PC, Mac, laptop, whatever we're using. In other words, if it's a C colon backslash or something like that, uh, something that's environment specific, we don't want to push it. They give us a git ignore file. It may be just a little tricky to find, but you have to go to a switch view here and you can see it just like so. Here's the git ignore file. They make a lot of good assumptions here about what you don't want to push. So for many projects, this will be fine. But if you end up combining different technologies, you might want to make your own git ignore file. Or if you use something that doesn't create a git ignore file for you, it's a good idea, idea to create a git ignore file. You can create one very easily by going to gitignore.io and then you simply put in anything that you're going to be using as part of your development. So we could say Visual Studio and we can just try different things. C Sharp, like so. And you can keep adding other things that you might be using and then choose create and it will create a git ignore file for you. Nonetheless, we want to focus on some of the more common Git keywords, and we want to see how we can use those in our project. So for this, I'm going to make just a few simple changes. We're not worried so much about the code I'm writing or anything like that. We just want to know that there is a change. So uh, first one, we'll say welcome to my plant diary. So just add a few extra words there. Now I go to Team Explorer, choose Home, and then you can choose Sync. And this will show us if there are any differences between our local, which is what we're working on, and our remote. At the time, it's not showing any differences, but that's because I haven't committed anything. So let's right-click and choose Git, and you'll see down here is Commit. Now, by the way, this Git option just appeared once we synchronized our project with GitHub and we added that Git plugin. So that wasn't there before. If you don't see it, just ensure that your project is connected to version control. So I say Commit update the title and commit all. The commit was created locally sync to, to share your changes with the server. Consider our animation. The little circles in your IDE are the changes that we just made. And when we issue a commit, we're simply committing to our local version control system. And Visual Studio is telling us that we've done that, but we need to synchronize to push up to our remote repository. So that's this git push origin master command, which is what we're going to do next. We'll do a before and after look at our repository. Notice it says two commits, and when I click, we see the two commits that we've already seen. Now, the commit locally did not impact our remote, correct? Because it's only on our local system. So let's go ahead and click sync here. And that's the same view we saw going another way if we clicked on home and then we click on sync, gonna take us to the exact same page. And now you see outgoing commits and it's asking us to push. Remember, push. So we choose push, grab our GitHub window over here so we can keep an eye on it. You can see a progress bar happening. And then we come back to GitHub. This browser is representing our remote version control system, public GitHub. And sure enough, you see update the title. Wonderful. If you prefer command line, you can use these same commands on the command line. Let's make one more change to demonstrate that. Maybe we'll say something like, add the plants you planted, the dates you planted them, and the dates you harvested them. So we're not, again, not too worried about the text. We just wanna put something in here that will represent a change. One thing you'll find very valuable is to go back to the Team Explorer, click on Home, and click on Changes. This will show you any changes that you've made that you've not committed yet. And of course, from here you can commit them, but we remember what we're going to do now is show how to do this on the command line. Let's choose Tools, Command Line, Developer Command Prompt. Now we'll say Git Add to stage our changes. Git Add, then period rather, to stage our changes. And now Git Commit, dash M, which lets us put a message, and then we'll say update copy on the home page. Uh, put that in quotes because it has spaces. 
Now we see one file changed, one insertion, one deletion. Just like before, we'll refresh our remote and confirm that the changes are not there yet. Now what we can do is say git push origin master. Remember what this means. Git push means push it up there. Origin is a nickname for the remote version control system, which we can validate that's correct in a moment. And then master is the branch we're pushing to. So you see here's master. That makes that fairly straightforward. We go back and refresh and we see update copy on the home page indeed has been synchronized. We can go back to our changes view and we can see that the UI has updated as well to indicate that we don't have anything that's pending for our remote. So that demonstrates several of our keywords here. We didn't do pull because we didn't have a change that came in from somewhere else. That's a look at what you really need to know to become comfortable with Git and also GitHub as a remote version control system. This will let you set up a project and do all the work that you need to do with that project and stay in sync. In a future video, we'll take a look at branches as well. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.